Hi, this is Ann from Design Bundles, and today I'm going to show you how to make a web button in Adobe Illustrator. All right, let's get started. All right, I'm in Adobe Illustrator, and first I'm going to come over here and create a new document. We're going to choose web up here at the top, and I'm just going to make this 250 by 80 pixels, and then we'll come down here to create. Okay, and this is a pretty good size for a web button. Now I'm going to create a rectangle. So I'll hit M on my keyboard, which will bring me over here to the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to click and drag. Now right now I've got a white fill and a black outline on this. I don't need an outline quite yet, so I'm going to get rid of this by just clicking none right here. And we'll get back on our white. Let's just change this to green. Now, if you don't have your color palette up, you can get to that right over here under Window Color, and all of these other palettes can be found under Window also. Okay, so we've got our green rectangle. You'll notice these little white circles with blue dots inside. You can just click and drag those and it'll around your corners. I think I want these about right here. Okay, that's perfect. Now with this web button, I would like a little highlight that comes right across the top like this. So to do that, I'm going to copy this rectangle. I'll copy with Command C, Control C on a PC. And then I'm going to paste in front. That's Command F or Control F, depending on which system you have. And I'm going to change this to yellow. So I have a yellow rectangle with round corners on top of another rectangle that's green. Uh, now I'm going to offset this path. So we'll come up here to Effect, Path, and Offset Path. And I'm just going to put this at negative four. So as you can see, it's offset it from that edge inside. So now we can see the green one underneath. We'll say OK. And if we hit Command Y or Control Y on a PC, it doesn't look like that happened. And that's because it's an effect in our appearance. So we need to expand this effect to get it to actually be that size. So let's go up here to Object, Expand Appearance. Now if we hit Command Y or Control Y on a PC, you can see that it's actually this size, the smaller size. Hit Command Y or Control Y to get back. Okay, now I'm going to click this one and drag and then hold Shift and Option to make a copy. If you're on a PC, that's Shift and Alt. And I want it just a little lower. And now I'm going to change this to a different color just so you can see what we've got. So we actually have three rectangles right now. A green large one and then two smaller rectangles that are yellow and blue. I'm going to select the yellow one and the blue one by holding Shift, and then I'll hit Shift M to get to my Shape Builder tool. That's right over here. And you can see it changes when we mouse over it. So basically, I want to keep this yellow piece, but I don't want the blue pieces anymore. So I'm going to hold Option, and that will change my cursor to have a little minus beside it. Now I'm going to just drag across the blues, and it'll delete them. And that is exactly what I want. Okay, let's get back on our selection tool. And I'm going to choose white. And now we have our little shadow. Now let's come up here to the opacity. By the way, if you don't have this bar at the top, that is under window also. It's right here, control. Oh, I just got rid of it. There we go. Okay, and you'll see opacity up here. So let's knock this down to about 40% maybe 50%. Okay, so far that's looking really nice. So we've got a nice little highlight shadow on our button. But now I think our button is a little boring, so I wanna add a gradient to this. So with my selection tool, I'll just click on the button, and now I'm going to pull up our gradient window. So we'll go to Window and Gradient. And I'll just click right here on the gradient slider. And that'll give us a black to white gradient on the button. I'm gonna double click on this, and then I'm just going to come over here and choose this green right up here. So to get this to be green, you'll come over here to this slider, and then you can choose the green that you want right up here. We'll say okay. 
And now I'll double click on the white and I'm going to do the same thing. Come over here to the color, go to my greens and just get a pretty dark green. Maybe, maybe right here. We'll say, okay. Oh yeah, that's looking nice. I want the gradient to be light on top, but dark on the bottom, not right to left. So to do that, I'm going to come over here on my gradient panel and just type in 90 degrees. Okay, and that's done it. We've got the light green on top and the dark green on bottom. Now, if yours doesn't look quite like this, you can switch it right here and it'll reverse what's on top and bottom. My highlight isn't showing up very well anymore, so I'm gonna bump the opacity up to 70 instead. Okay, now I'm going to add a little outline around the edge of this. So to do that, I'm gonna come down here to Appearance. And you can see we have a fill here, and that's our gradient. And I want a stroke, but I want it to be behind the fill. And so I'm just going to grab it in this empty space over here and pull it down below the fill. And now the stroke, I want it to be a dark green. And it'll start out at one point, and I'm just going to click the buttons. Hmm, it's not showing up. And the solution for that might be in our stroke panel. So let's click on the stroke. And yes, I can see that the stroke is aligned to the inside, and I want it to be to the center. Okay, that's looking pretty nice, but I think it needs to be a little darker. So I'm gonna double click on the stroke and come right down here. Oh yes, that looks nice. Maybe a little bit thicker. I'm going to select everything and just resize it a little bit so we didn't, don't get too close to that edge. All right, and I think our button is ready. Now all we need to do is put some text inside. So I'll hit T on my keyboard and that'll bring us to the text tool. I'll click once down here and I'm just going to type learn more. Get back on our selection tool and I'll come up here to the font, which is up here in the control panel. And I'll put Montserrat. Montserrat is a nice font for this type of thing. I like Montserrat bold. Okay, that looks nice. I'll position it about here and I'm gonna hold shift and then grab a corner and make it quite a lot bigger. And then I'll get my fill in front and I'll change it to white. So this button is ready to go on the web, but there's one more thing we need to do and that is to export it so it works well for the web. I'm gonna hit Shift O to get my artboards tool and now we can resize where this falls. So I just kind of want to center it up a little bit and not have it so far away from the edge. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Now we just need to export it for web. And to do that, we can go to File, Export, Export As, and for Format, we'll choose PNG and we'll use Artboards. Um, we only have one Artboard, so all is fine, and we'll go to Export. And now, since this is for web, we'll leave it at 72 and we want a background color of transparent. So we'll say OK. And now it's saved it in that location. So let's go take a look at it. Okay, here it is. I actually didn't save it as anything. Probably should have done that. If you're on a Mac, you can just hit your space bar and you can see that the edge is transparent. It's not white anymore out there. On a PC, you'll probably have to open it with some kind of uh, image viewer, probably. All right, and it's that easy to make a button for web. Okay, if you like this video and you wanna see more videos like this, just hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it and you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.